Nate and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for sponsoring today's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Niagara is the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products, including toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara products were originally designed just for plumbing professionals, but they're now available for homeowners as well. So, if you're remodeling your home or constructing new, check out NiagaraCorp.com to get long-lasting water savings. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stanback back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. <laughs> Hello, this is Nate Newton. Right now, you know my show. It's the, the Dub Nation, baby. It's Let Me Tell You Something. My boy Isaiah is out of place right now. That's Isaiah Stanback, the great uh, quarterback, wide receiver from the great state of Washington. And you, Dub, is his uh, deal. But I'm here with John Radigan, my boy who helped bring me into this world of uh, what they call media types. And John, hey, how are you doing and what are you doing? And hey, tell me something. Let me tell you this, Nate. I remember having some of the best conversations I ever had when you were a player and we were in the media. I was in the media yes. working for NBC5 at the time, and I knew then. I was like, this young man, at the time you were young, Nate, this young, young man. man. And so was I. So was I, by the way. I said, this young man is going to be great in the media. And then I remember when we both started working over at ESPN Radio back in the day, uh, up, right. up there in Arlington, up on the high floor up yeah. there. And we were having a great time doing that for, for, for a year or so. And then our Cowboys postgame show, which then was Fox Sports Southwest. We did that for years and years. Yes, I we did. I got to know Michelle, yes, your wife, so well. Yes. She came in there and helped us out, uh, and and uh, it was so much fun doing that show. I remember you and I used to also do that from AT&T Stadium. Yes, uh, we did. So, so that was also fun. But anyway, uh, so I'm still doing things for the Rangers and for the Oklahoma City Thunder on the, uh, under the Bally Sports umbrella. Bally's changing around a little bit and changing their structure. Right. But uh, anyway, that's what I'm still doing. But uh, you know me, Nate, I am all Cowboys, too. I love the Cowboys. I love what they have done this off season. I love the way things are looking in camp. Uh, how's it looking out there to be there? I miss being at camp for all those years. Oh, uh, man, it is great. Uh, Coach McCarthy, I am so excited. Uh, I, I stopped Coach McCarthy the other day uh, when I got out here the first day of padded practice. And I stopped and said, Coach, can I ask you a personal question? And he kind of looked at me like, uh, yeah. I said, what took so damn long to become the office of coordinator? He just bust out laughing. So, uh, I, because that is what I really wanted him to do when he first got here was to become the office of coordinator. And so I just hate that it's in his last year of his contract. And, you know, and with every new office becomes new languages, new way of doing things. And it's the West Coast offense and, and a lot changes by the alignment of your safeties and how your outside linebackers play. So it's a lot of reading to be done by the receivers and a lot of connecting to the quarterback. So, But he's got hands-on with Dak. You should see him in practice talking. Uh, he's asking, what did you see there? Uh, maybe you could have went here. Uh, look at this little nuance. And they're working well together here early in training camp, and I'm, I'm excited about it. What Radican, what really uh, – impresses me is the fact that we have Mike Solari as our offensive line coach. Now, he first got into the league in 19... Uh, when did I first come to the league? 1976 is when I first... 86 when I first came into the league. And that's when he first came into the league is in 86, 87. And so uh, I remember when he was a rookie coach. And now, 30, 40 years later... He's one of the best offensive lineman coaches in the league, and he's going to have to do that because they're working with a lot of young guys, man. Let me go down this list, man. For, uh, Earl Bostic, 64, he's a, he's a young guy. Alex uh, Lindstrom, 65, he's a young guy. T.J. Bass is a uh, is a, uh, a rookie, and uh, we, we signed him, and they like him, and uh, he's a young guy. Brock Hoffman, all of these are young guys that we're trying to find a spot at tackle or, or either center. And uh, we need for uh, the big guy, uh, Walasco, to come up big. That's the big guy we drafted last year that got hurt. 
we need for him to come up big at that right tackle to back still up. So this, what I, where I'm dig where I'm going at is coach Mike Solari is going to be the MVP of this league of this team, or he's going to be the goat of this team because if we are only going to go as far as our offensive line. Okay, that so is, let me ask as you this. As far as we're going to go. Let me ask you this, Nate. Uh, what about Zach? What, what's going to happen there? Uh, is he going to a get a new contract? A week before training camp. Hmm? A week before training camp. Now, I think we have Isaiah on. Is Isaiah on? Did he, did he click in? Oh, uh, I tell see him Spencer, here. Wait a minute. I yeah, see him. Yeah, click him in, man, because I started early because I, I have you here. But click him in and and uh, and introduce yourself to the great Isaiah uh, Standback. We call him. Man, your room is ugly. Come on, man, clean your room, <laughs> Isaiah. That. Come on, man. Hey, when he's For sitting there, we don't ugly. see his room. Come on, man. Get the wife or somebody to come visit or something, brother. Clean your room or get your little baby hey, girl or somebody. Clean, <laughs> hey, I got candles. I got candles. I got drinks. I got snacks. What you need, Nate? My room clean, man. Sweet, baby. Wow, man. Good to have you, Isaiah. I'm here with uh, with my boy, man, John. R- God, it's just good to see you, man. It's great to see you. You, you, you know my boy, Isaiah? But, you know Isaiah, Isaiah? Isaiah and I have crossed paths a couple times. By the time I was, by the time he was playing, I was, you know, with you. I wasn't out there every day. Right. But, uh, but man, I, I love seeing you, Isaiah. You do, you're doing a great job on this with Nate, too. I appreciate you, man. Thank you very much. How oh, are you yeah. doing? Yeah. No, do, I'm doing very well. And Nate and I just walking down memory lane, but also talking about what's happening with the with the team thus far. And uh, Nate's thinking Zach's coming back week before training camp. So uh, I think that will set Cowboys fans' minds at ease, right? So you know that anchor is there in, in the middle of that offensive line, Nate. Yeah. I, you know, the thing is, he helps so uh, much with our center. And our right tackle still in our center, uh, be honest. He is the, uh, you know, I don't want to say the glue uh, that sets the thing because, uh, but he is the man. I mean, he is the man. I would like to get Tyron uh, Smith some some love in, in that right there because he gives a veteran presence. But uh, but Zach Martin is that guy that's in the middle. He's the captain. He's that guy that get that settling effect, man. When you get an upset stomach, you look for Alcacelsis, right? That is the apple sauce of our offensive line. He settles everything down. So, a little Pepto? Yeah, a little Pepto, man. That pink stuff, man. Not, what are you like drinking, it. man? That ain't no mixed drink, is it? <laughs> it's water, Nate. Don't let the pinky fool you. Don't let the pinky fool you, Nate. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I thought maybe Isaiah was getting into a little Pepto this morning already. So, <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, man. Yeah. Wow, man. But, it's, yeah. Uh, but so, I, Nate, I was just telling him Isaiah. No, go ahead on, Rad. Were you, were you, uh, was the West Coast offense just becoming a thing when you were young in the league? I know it had, it had made its way through college, but was it just becoming a thing at the NFL level when you were a young offensive lineman? Oh, no, 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 no. Steve Walsh, I mean, Coach Walsh, I'm talking about Steve Walsh, Coach Walsh of the 49ers. Uh, and, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, Isaiah, I think he was kind of one of the creators of that yeah. of that offense. Because uh, I think San Diego had their own version. The Chargers had their own version with their coach. But Coach Walsh really brought it in. Now, what has happened over the years is people made it more wide receiver friendly. You got to understand when the 49ers was running, they had a fullback, a tailback, a regular inline tight end, and two wide receivers. But this thing uh, evolved over the years, and Isaiah, you know a little bit more about that than I do. Yeah, I don't know the, the necessarily the origin of it. I just right. know that I've been in a number of systems that, um, that are, I guess, engaged with the West Coast offense, particularly in college. And then, obviously, I spent some time in Seattle with the Seahawks. Those guys run uh, the West Coast even to this day. Uh, <clears throat> but, you know, Schottenheimer, that's what he does. You know, be, be shoddy, that's that's the system that he likes to run. It's 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 – it's high precision. It's um, almost mistake proof, <laughs> you know, in, in the sense of guys know exactly what they're supposed to be doing on any given play. Uh, they're able to add a lot, of, a lot of wrinkles to it without making it too complex for your team. You make it complex for the defense to be able to digest and dissect because a lot of the things look the exact same. Uh, so it's very simplistic to run. It allows for you to play fast and play with a lot of confidence. And don't let him say by simplistic. That means that you, 
if you know the offense, because the offense is difficult to learn depending on where you're at, because you showed me a playbook of the Patriots. Yeah, that's not West Coast. <laughs> okay, that is somebody else. That's out of world, bro. Yeah. That's out of world. So uh, you still have to be intelligent. The the receipt yes. is three people that has has to be connected at the hip. The offensive coordinator, the quarterbacks, and the and the skill position players have to be connected at the hip. Because if you don't, that quarterback see that you should be running a quick slant. He's throwing that ball there, and you have to be there. So, Isaiah, you mentioned B-Shot, you know, so how is it going to work with him as the offensive coordinator, but essentially with Mike McCarthy calling the plays? Have, have we figured out how exactly that's all going to work out yet? I think they're one of the same. I think they both come from that same, you know, that same cut of cloth. So I think that their, <clears throat> their uh, philosophies are, are, are literally parallel. They're in, they're in cohesiveness with each other. So I believe that, you know, there's not going to be a lot of tips going back and forth. I don't really care who the play call is coming from. I think that they're both running the same type of system. It's just going to come down to, you know, percentage of runs versus percentage of pass. And I think this is probably going to be the most equal that you've probably ever seen it. I know Nate's going to love it because, you know, these guys are definitely going to run the ball. Uh, the question mark just becomes who's going to be running the ball on a consistent basis. You know, is it going to be Tony Pollard? Is it going to be, uh, you know, Rico Dowdle? Are they going to bring somebody else in? Like, I think those are the question marks that have to be answered because with this style of a rushing attack zone, this is going to be more of the zone scheme, I believe. These guys are going to need backs that are durable because you're going to get beat up. <clears throat> so you guys are two different eras of NFL football. But I have to think when you look at training camp now, I know this from covering a bunch of Nate's camp. And, and Isaiah, I think it was a little more physical when you were. Now, when Nate was there, they did the middle drill yeah. every day, Nate. Every day you did the middle drill. Yeah, yeah it was whole on each time, other. Every day. And I assume, whole Isaiah, time, you had a little day. more contact than they do now. And do both of you wish you were playing now at country club training camp? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. I don't know if I wish that I was in this training camp, but I do know that this training camp is easier. Yeah, That's the dog, I'm sure. I know the money's bigger, so I definitely want my money. Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, money didn't is even, huge. Didn't I mean, an average that. office lineman can make can make three mil. An uh, average office lineman, the most that one made, yeah. what, by 750 and I was a signing bonus? So how much how much would you be making right now, Nate, if you were playing? Oh, man. Me and Zach could be holding out together. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Zach Martin would be holding out together. Hey man, you don't show, I don't show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> is, is is the holdout awesome. a concern just from a stand? He's gonna know what he needs to do when he gets back. Like he doesn't necessarily need this time, Nate. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, I just think he need to be back a week before, you know, when that week of the of the the first game. I think he needs to be back or maybe a few days before so because the language changed a little bit and he's got to get in there and just, you know, see what uh his uh interior guys see with him. Is it, what do you see here still or what do you see here be artish and that and and that right there is what he needs just the communication part. I think he can get physical real quick, you know, you know, cause New York ain't going to be playing. They got a mm -hmm. defense, so they're going to be bringing it. So mm -hmm. he need to be in to get all those reps. Hey, Isaiah, Dak turned 30. This is a, that's a prime time, isn't it, for a quarterback? I mean, this is, this is a man who we all know is loved in that locker room and, and has now a, a, you know, a boatload of experience. What do you think we'll see from a now 30 year old Dak Prescott this year? I think you'll see a resurgence. I think you'll see some juice out of him because he's going to be able to get the ball into the hands of his playmakers. And it's really not going to be a huge strain on him. I mean, it's for him, the biggest strain is going to be putting them in the proper play on any particular down. Uh, you know, they're going to be coming out a lot of even sets. So being able to make sure that you can decipher where the fronts are at and where the advantage is for your office alignment in terms of the running scheme, um, in terms of the passing game, making the right decision based upon the coverage that's, that's given to you. These are all very quick decisions. They are really trying to make it black and white. Look this way. No, look that way. Yes. OK, let's go. Let's roll with it. All right. You look this way. Oh, that's what a play is called. OK, over, 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 over. Switch it up. Let's put our guys in the best position to be successful and just keep the chains moving. I don't think they're going to be asking him to do a whole lot of gunslinging down the field unless it's coming off a of play action. You know, when he does have to throw the ball deep, it's going to be probably um, 
is the, the reception rate is going to be high because these guys should be wide open um, based upon this type of scheme that they're going to be running. So Dak's going to should have a lovely year, um, but it's going to be from the from the viewer's perspective, it's going to be pretty boring, and that's exactly what he probably wants. So sixty eight percent would probably be easy for him this year. Yes. Yes. And if you look back at those 90s teams, Nate, that you were a part of, you mm-hmm. could easily say that scheme was boring, right? It wasn't flat. Yes, it yes. wasn't West Coast. It was hand the ball to Emmett and and then take your chances when you got them. I mean, you know, right. it's, it's an easy case to be made that that was similarly boring as to what Isaiah is describing this year's will look like. You, you know, it always comes down to the flair of the quarterback because mm-hmm. we were born, but Troy was accurate, but yeah. 49ers <laughs> were excited, but Steve Young and Joe Montana, they was excited. It's the flamboyancy of your quarterback. You take Kansas City, uh, they yeah. the, the guy before Mahomes, the guy that went to the Redskins, he was, he was a good quarterback, mm-hmm. and Andy worked with him well. But he was it, – it's just always the flamboyancy of the quarterback. And, and Isaiah, when you was at UW, yeah. you was flamboyant. You brought a, a style that made it exciting. Player. I mean, the offense uh, is not exciting unless it's your quarterback. You know, wide receivers can catch bombs, but it's always that guy that's throwing it, always that guy that's taking that extra move to the right or to the left, the sidearm, the, you know, slinging it. Mm-hmm. It's always the quarterback that makes the, the offense exciting. Do you feel that there is that excitement in Dak's game, Isaiah? I don't see <clears throat> the excitement aspect, but I don't think that necessarily has to be there. Yes, it does, think, right? I think this team, the excitement's on the other side of the ball. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's and that's what and that plays to the advantage of this in this team because as Nate's alluding to, you don't mind a boring offense. Like, like the like the big nasties up front, you know, big Nathan and 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 the Martins of the world, like they like the boring because the boring means I'm beating these guys' hands in for sixty plus plays. And I'm gonna beat them up and I'm gonna make them want to go home and and then guess what? Then I'm gonna go sit down for a minute. I'm gonna get something to sit and something to drink and then I'm gonna watch my defense go out there and beat them up and then we're gonna go out there and do it again. So it's like it's like you're like like WWE just tag team. You know, you go beat somebody up, you tag your partner, and let him go beat them up, and then you go back and forth. That's what you. That's what you want as a as a team, a successful team in the NFL, and I don't I don't mind that. You know, I don't mind that. You want Dak to be able to hand the ball off to Tony Pollard and let him go do all the flash. You want Dak to be able to throw a short, you know, ten yard out, twelve yard out to Brandon Cooks, let him break one tackle, and then use his gas to go make the big play. He doesn't need all the attention. He just needs to go ahead and make sure that the decisions are made correctly. And see the excitement with Dak is. Uh, and what, what was exciting about him his first few years was uh, he would take off and run. Mm-hmm. And uh, and as he's matured a little bit, he don't take off and run as much unless it's a, a very, very tight situation. But he'll find out in the West Coast offense, it's even room to do that. It's even yes. room to, 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 take, to take off and run. So uh, the, the offense will be okay. Uh, like you said, the flamboyance is going to come with number 90, number 11. Uh, those yeah. guys gonna be bringing get Sam William healthy because we're gonna need him at some point in the year uh, right. to 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 bring the heat. So uh, that that is that right. is excitement right there. You look at it from like another team in the league that that has a, has a high powered offense, but the quarterback is really low key. Look at Miami. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Look at Miami. Yeah. You don't hear much. You don't hear much about Tua. Nope. You know he's not flashy. He's trying to run this kid media, out of there. Like, I don't understand why. Mm-hmm. No, he no. just needs to put a pad on the back of his head right. so he doesn't get any more concussions. Yeah, that's but, the thing. The poor kid but, gets hurt. Yeah. They, yeah, but they put all the flair around him. Yes. All the excitement and all the flares around him. He hands the ball off. He has three running backs that are fast, some of the fastest dudes in the league. Yeah. Let those guys go get the yardage. He has receivers that can waddle in and Tyreek Hill. Get those guys the ball in their hand. I don't care where you get it in their hands. They're going to run with it, and they're going to do all the flares and the celebrations. <laughs> and, and Tua just does what? He just – just yeah. coast by. Hey, yeah. listen, y'all, I'm the distributor. Y'all do what you do. Like, as long as we get these W's, I don't care who gets the attention. That's right. 
So, yeah. Isaiah, uh, with regard to your experience with the West Coast, and you're talking about, and, and we, anybody who's ever watched it, we know that quick, you know, that quick play. I mean, plays are quick from the line of scrimmage. A guy's in his mm-hmm. spot, you hit him, or you look at the next guy. Um, look, we know, you know, Dak's Achilles heel over the years has been the picks. In this style of offense, is it less prone for that type of thing, for is is there a less opportunity for picks in that regard? Yeah, hundred percent. When it comes to the decision making, yes, the issue that Dak had last year, he hasn't really had a big interception issue in his career, but last year specifically, he had problems because of the type of system that he was running and what was being asked of him and the receivers to do in terms of reading defenses. So there was a lot of miscommunication as to where the ball should be. Where, when should I be looking for the ball? What route am I running versus what coverage? So that's where you saw a lot of those errors last year. When you look at him this year, going into this season, when you look at it from that aspect, the the, the percentage of chance for that to happen again is far less. But in the West Coast offense, and this is something I've been very, and Nate, Nate knows even going into last year, last two years, I've been on Dak about his accuracy is going to come into play. Yep. Even though these are short passes, shorter passes, higher precision passes, if he puts the ball on the wrong shoulder, there is a greater probability for tip balls, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Balls coming off a of shoulder pass because they're coming out too hot. Right. And now you have a chance in the West Coast because everybody's so convoluted. You have a a higher probability for that to happen in terms of interceptions if the ball is not placed where it needs to be. So, though it's a more simplistic, easier read offense for him, he's going to have to do a greater job of putting the ball precisely where it needs to be. Ooh, Nate, you got a partner here. That's a great answer. That is exactly what I thought. And that's a great answer. What are you saying, Nate? In I'm sorry, years. No, no, I, I'm glad you're getting excited. Like, when I see you jumping like that, I mean, the fans <laughs> out there jumping oh, like that. I love that. Yeah. Uh, Joe Montana did not have the strongest arm, but his right. accuracy was not was not, never questioned. And that's mm-hmm. where Dak has to be. Uh, and I agree with Isaiah. That's where Dak has to be. He has to be accurate. It ain't got how hard you can throw it, how fast you can throw it. It's, it's can you get it where it need to be got at the right time. All right, so Nate, you know this. Isaiah doesn't yet. I'm a Michigan guy. How's my man yes, Mozzie are. looking? How's my man Mozzie? Uh, he's looking good so far. He's physical. Uh, he's demanding attention. Uh, uh, him and uh, Tyler Smith are banging hard okay. every day. Uh, I saw him in pass rush, kind of lift a couple of guys up out of their shoes, and he didn't r- just rush right down the middle. He got on. He got half man. Uh, he's got a certain amount of arrogance, but it, it, it's not uh, taco-ish, and I'm glad of that. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you had mentioned, Isaiah, that the, the real flair of this team is that number one defense. Again, been, been ranked number one over the past couple of years, and, and they improved. This defense is better than last year, isn't it? Yeah, uh, somehow, some way, they have improved. and. Um, they just have a plethora of defensive linemen and you can go to any team that you fear in this league. And they usually have a plethora of defensive yeah. linemen. Yes. I mean, you, I mean, you start thinking about the Phillies of the world. You start talking about the, the San Francisco's of the world. Like these teams have waves of D linemen and that's the same category that this Dallas team is in. And they continue to add versatile players that have speed that if you know anything about Dan Quinn, you have to be a versatile, you have to be have speed and you have to be relentless. If you have those three, if you have those three attributes, Dan Quinn loves you. He finds a way. He's going to find a way. Thank you very much. Now he will put you where you can succeed. And he's like, listen, we have guys that can do a little bit of everything. So guess what? As an offensive team, I mean, as an as a offense is approaching the line of scrimmage, you don't know where we're going to be at. You don't know where we're going to be at because you might see Mozzie Smith playing at DN. You might see Micah Parson lining up over the center, and he's finding ways to get one-on-one matchups 
based upon the attributes of the offense alignment that are going to give his guys on defense the greatest opportunity to win their one-on-one matchups. That's all Dan Quinn wants. He wants you to say, hey, can you beat your – he wants dogs in there that say, hey, I refuse to lose my one-on-one matchups. And he's like, I'm going to put you in the best one-on-one matchup for you. Along yeah. those lines, Nate, who uh, – what is Micah Parsons now, besides about to be a very rich man? What uh, What is he? Uh, are we thinking of him as a linebacker still, or is he now a full He's a defensive, defensive man. lineman? He's a defensive yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I tell you what, fellas, we're going to have to shut this down. I got an important meeting I need to be to, and I'm so sorry. Uh-huh. Are you kidding me? We're, so just sorry, started, we're just getting yeah, started, We're just getting started. Yeah, we're just getting started. <laughs> Mr. Radigan, we thank you for showing up. And hey, we man, will be pleasure. back another day. Isaiah, thank you for coming in. But we're yes, just going to have to flush this one. We're going to have to flush, flush this one. one. Yes. Hey, <laughs> people are going to love it. We're running back. 